and here we are going to take a look at the angular momentum of the p orbital electrons. In other words, the electrons that will be found in the p orbitals. And now, where are the p orbitals and how are they found? Well, it turns out that we have various energy levels around the nucleus of an atom. This is energy level 1, energy level 2, 3, and so forth. That's determined by the principal quantum number, or not determined, but assigned by the principal quantum number would be a better word. And then within each energy level, we have sublevels. Now, in the first energy level, we only have one sublevel, which corresponds to L equals 0, which means that is an s orbital. So there's no p orbitals found in the innermost energy level. In the second energy level, we find both s orbitals and p orbitals. The 1 L equals 1 is associated with the p orbitals. It's associated with the p subshells. And in it, we'll find three p orbitals, uh, partially due to the fact that there is different orientation of, of those uh, of the angular momentum within those orbitals, and so therefore we can uh, associate that we, with different p orbitals. Um, in the third level, again, we find that there's three subshells. One is the s subshell, one is the p subshell, and one here would be the d subshell. And in the fourth energy level, we have the subshell, the, the s subshell, the p subshell, the d subshell, and the f subshell. We get into those later, but now let's concentrate on the p subshell. So besides level number one, in every subsequent level, you will find a set of three p orbitals. Now the p orbitals, of course, here they're illustrated. We have one along the z-axis, and notice it's a double lobe along the z-axis, a double lobe along the y-axis, and a double lobe around the x-axis. So those are what we would call the three p orbitals. And each of those p orbitals we'll find can contain two electrons. So there can be a, a total of six electrons in the p subshell at each energy level. So there can be six at the second level, six at the third level, six at the fourth level, and so forth. But what about the angular momentum of those electrons in each of those three orbitals, in each of the, three, in each of the subshells, the p subshells, in each energy level? What is the angular momentum of those? Well, we determined that the angular momentum L is equal to the square root of the angular momentum quantum number L times L plus 1 times h bar. Again, it's h bar is equal to h divided by 2 pi. And h is, of course, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. Divide that by 2 pi, that would be h bar. And that is a basic quantity in nature that determines the quantization of small things such as electrons. So if we're now going to find the angular momentum of electrons in the p orbitals, notice that each of the p orbitals, regardless of what energy level they're in, is determined by the angular momentum quantum number L being equal to 1. So what that means is if I'm going to find the, the uh, angular momentum L of all the p electrons that is equal to the square root of 1 times 1 plus 1 times h bar, and that's equal to the square root, that, that looks like 1 times 2 is the square root of 2 times h bar. So that would be the angular momentum of the electrons in the p orbitals. What it turns out, if you take a look at it, it is the angular momentum of every single electron in every single orbital at every single energy level as long as it's a p orbital in, inside one of the p subshells. So that means that all electrons in the p subshells all have the same angular momentum. Well, notice that I didn't write a vector quantity. That means that they all have the same magnitude of the angular momentum. They could have different orientations of the angular momentum, and in that we'll get into that a little bit later. But what this then determines is that regardless of what energy level you're in, as long as you're in a p orbital, or I should say not you, but an electron in a p orbital, that means that every one of those electrons will have an angular momentum quantity, absolute value, I should say, a magnitude of the square root of 2 times h bar. So we take this number, multiply times the square root of 2, and that would be the exact angular momentum of every single electron in any p orbital. And so that makes it hopefully clear to you that it doesn't matter what p orbital you're in, doesn't matter what energy level you're in, it's always exactly the same angular momentum.